Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I'm taking a little break from the What Once Was series, but I'm not done with it. Uh, next time, I'm going to go to Philly. Right? But the dark side, this this had a great article in it. Um, but unfortunately, I see more and more of the virus getting in here. Alan, got to sort it out with these writers, yeah? Come on. And you, you get some of the, a lot of this stuff is getting in. Um, yeah. And real quick, as an example, right? you think I'm being reactionary. Look at this. Uh, they have uh, the BFI Dreams of Monsters series. Okay, who well, focuses on how horror has been the most radical, provocative genre since the very inception of cinema, the politicized nature of the genre, and how it includes and celebrates ethnically diverse filmmakers and queer voices. Right. And Dreams of Monsters promises to throw open the door. Oh, you promise? Maybe inviting everyone, whether established fans, curious individuals, or even those unconvinced. The horror films are for them. Eh, man, fuck those people. But it's interesting that you see what they're using this stuff for at this point. When I could argue this, I could argue the same thing they are and say, you're not wrong. You're right. Horror is radical. It is provocative. It is political. <laughs> and it celebrates, uh, it has always celebrated these things you're talking about, actually. Okay, but coming from the different direction. Okay. The or tradition, the pagan reflex. Okay, they're not doing it for that. Uh, they're doing, <laughs> they're doing it for the real horror of what we're headed towards. Right. But uh, I just saw more of that, more of that in this. Right. And uh, I'm just wanna, I don't want to spend too long on this issue. Right. I thought this was interesting. The, the uh, hardcore porn horrors. I've actually seen these films. The Black Emanuel. Uh, Laura Gemser, although she's Malaysian, actually. Uh, uh, Rag Nights of Living Dead is, is kind of stupid. Uh, uh, Porno Holocaust, right? The glorious title, Porno Holocaust. These are actually, these are the Joe model films. He could make good movies when he wanted to. Those were not the ones. Uh, and it was just, it's just like I said, other than, I've always heard of this film, The uh, La Bête, right? the French for The Beast, by Valerian Borosik. Yeah, I always heard this crazy, but hey, it's an our house film, right? So it's it's you know the the, the nudity and the, and the whatnot is fine, but the rest of these, you know, like this this <laughs> this fucking dude, oh man, yeah, you know, it just doesn't work, man. Right? This sinful dwarf. Why do I remember he died? Uh, and this is a, the gay porn market for men, right? They have a movie. They had a movie called The Destroying Angel. Ooh, well, that was coming, wasn't it, <laughs> for you guys? So, and instead of and instead of taking responsibility, you blamed everybody else. But that was the whole point. Right? And this fucking guy, man, I wish you'd get rid of this dude. I don't like this dude. So, although this movie here is interesting, actually, this looks really interesting. Found footage film, right? One check there. Early nineteen forties snippets of home cine, cine, right? Cinema, recorded off air primitive television. Newsreel documents, right? and it's like an alternate like history or something. So this is, this looks interesting to me though. I'm not hopeful though by what I see here. So, but um, yeah, I guess that's I guess that's what these things are for. They give you an idea of what's out there. So, but most of these modern horror things are just so you can see the difference between this shit, right, and what you see in the past. Even this 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 stuff. Is light light years ahead of what you're getting. Okay, it's 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 degenerate. It's decline. Okay, it's it's going down, man. So your your culture is gonna reflect that. How many times I gotta say that? This is the whole thing of this uh, this issue that I liked a lot. This guy, I never heard of this dude. Okay, now of course you think of British horror, right? The British horror um, industry, the uh, Hammer, of course, is the, the biggest one. Uh, you had the uh, other studios. Um, you had British studios making non-horror films, obviously. But in terms of the horror, right? Uh, Norman J. Ward, uh, Peter Walker. You had these other filmmakers in the seventies and eighties, kind of making more of the horror stuff that was, I guess, influenced by the the Italian stuff, the video nasties, and the American stuff. They were kind of making more of these uh, slasher type films, these gory. Monster films um, that were not, you know, that didn't have uh, period costumes and whatnot in it. 
Uh, and this guy here, Michael J. Murphy, obviously his Irish name, but the micro budget cinema of Michael J. Murphy. This collection here of this guy I've never heard of. Okay, um, from 67 to 2015. Now, this guy has passed away, rest in peace. Um, but it's interesting when he described this guy, right? Um, he, he made uh, these really low budget horror films. Essentially, he was a DIY guy from back then. Really DIY, right? Um, and it, from what I'm seeing, what I'm reading, he was very diverse in his subject matter, okay? Uh, he did period horror films. He did period fantasy films. He he did black and white. He did uh, all gore. And this is interesting, you're right. Mike's work is far from conventional. And although he tried to shoot on 16mm film as frequently as he could, he would sometimes have to resort to the less well-defined 8mm, right, the Super, Super 8 film, or even enter the new world of videotape, right, as circumstances, excuse me, and finances dictated... Right, uh, but his ambition and never wavered. Uh, complex plots, uh, elements of the thriller, murderous fan, right? Um, overheated drugs, lands on Greek locations were reminiscent of Jimmy Sanchez's mini Hitchcocks made for him. Hmm, all right, uh, and it's interesting too. Like, they talk about here, right? Uh, the funny story is making miniatures, like architectural columns out of carpet roll cardboard inner tubes. Or oh, you got his, uh, his wild imagination, right? His special effects and makeup jobs concocted from whatever happened to be lying around in someone's kitchen or garage, right? To the similar production woes and ingenious problem solving feats of inspiration and magic performed by the Doctor Who team, right? Everybody always jokes about the Doctor Who in the 70s. Oh, it looks very cheap, you know, the miniature work and, and the special effects. Uh, but uh, there's something about that that I can appreciate for obvious reasons. And apparently, he seems to have a. Uh, he seems to have many recurring actors uh, friends it is right uh, so you get that, that that cool sense of when you have a auteur filmmaker uh, you see the same you see the same faces in different roles playing different kinds of movies I, I it's cool it's interesting I like that right and uh, obviously this guy passed away I think in 2015 well actually this is 2016 but he passed away a couple of years ago and look at that that Obviously, he's shooting on video at this point. He's older. That looks like some kind of jury-rigged um, a tripod or some um, steady cam. Is that a that looks like weights at the? Uh, that's what I'm saying. This guy I never heard of. I like the fact that this you and you had a bunch of these guys according to this. All right. And real quick too, I'm reading Nightmare USA by another British writer. Nightmare USA. This book is huge. I'm gonna go over it next. One of the things that I keep reading about from these guys, okay, obviously these people in the 70s and 80s making these independent films was how much they got ripped off, okay? Not by just fly-by-night, uh, you know, distributors, whether it was to a film, whether it was to theaters or to friggin' video labels. These guys got ripped off bad, a lot. And by reputable guys, and even when they had legal uh, representation so the corruption already you see the rip off uh, the the carny kind of uh, you know thing with the with the art versus commerce versus you know literally uh, organized crime tactics it's very interesting to see you know and, and as you can see it created a lot of bad blood but anyway round it out All right here's five more UK horror mice who are ripe for reappraisal and a lot of these guys works on YouTube, apparently. So this is this is a great resource. That's what I like to do. Stuff I've never heard of. You know, I know a lot of obscure stuff, but I, I there's things I there's still worlds yet to discover that were done for you, or that have been done already. Right? The whole analog horror thing. I never heard of that until Andy Nowicki mentioned it. Uh, of course, that's the opposite. That's being done by very young men now, right? With the technology, but these guys. Uh, or from the past uh, half century here, uh, Roy Spencer's brother Noel. Oh, you know you got your brother Noel. You know you know how that works, right? <laughs> it's that Oasis joke. Right? Um, Northern Ireland-based pair, right? So they made all these films. Interesting. They can be found online at the IFI archive. I'm assuming that's Irish film uh, something. Right? Then you got oh, you got a Scottish filmmaker named Enrico Cocoso. Okay. Um, Amateur circuit between the 40s and the 80s. 
Hard Influence Pieces. And you can find this online at the National Library of Scotland Moving Image Archive online. All right, so this, this is a lot of interesting stuff to look for, okay? There's always something new, right? Here's a guy who's, whose son has put a lot of his amateur films on YouTube. Hard themed subjects, right? A two part music industry set slash a mini epic called The Life of Part. Look at this. So, and, and rounding up this guy here, right? Um, this has given me a lot to look forward to look to, right? Look at this. Look at all this guy. Look at all the, here, the uh, stuff he made. Okay, I like the fact that this guy was really ambitious. So, thank you, Dark Side of Gun, for turning me on to someone who, you know, who's now uh, gone from here. But but is remet will be remembered by this. And look at they do good man. They do a good thing here, man. With the bonus materials, the books. Okay. So anyway, that was. I just wanted to share that with you. That's what. When you find out about people you never heard of, and you see stuff that's been done, for years, and you get like a real cool kind of cross section of what they've done and and what they had to do to do it. it was very, this guy was doing it when it was very difficult. Um, it's just, it's, it's what this stuff is. This is the highest level of what these things are supposed to achieve other than just reviews and, 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 you know, a political interviews with people, whatever, you know, and, um, I'm just rounding, uh, all right, round, rounding, look at this, oh, hounded, tradition is preserved in blood, once again, uh, the, the, uh, look, and you see the, the, the hero, oh, the poor guy. These evil British people. Right. Uh, but this tagline here is, is, once again, they don't realize it. They're just trying to say this is a bad thing. Tradition is preserved in blood. It is. Okay. That's the beauty of horror. All these progressive people don't realize that they're actually putting forth truth. Okay. That, they, that they don't realize. But anyway... Uh, and I'm not for fox hunting any, by the way. I think fox, I don't think it should be banned, though. Okay, it's amazing. I hate smoke. Smoking is disgusting. If you want to smoke, you can smoke. You know what I mean? Like, I, anyway, enough for that. Uh, it's not the direction we're headed. And, uh, this, dude, remember this movie? I saw this actually in Pennsylvania on USA. Apparently, they showed this on Channel 9. Horror of the Blood Monsters. Al Adamson, the guy that made, uh, uh, Dracula vs. Frankenstein the, Whose ending I hated But Horror of the Blood Monsters This is a crazy uh, uh, Patchwork film They take a black and white Filipino kind of uh, Action film With really cool Like monsters And guys fighting them Like warriors Right And they mix it with footage of Like Really fake looking Miniature spaceships John uh, John Carradine Right Uh and also, this cool beginning intro scene where you see like a vampire plague spreading around the Earth. And they're linked to this planet because you have like these vampire uh, creatures in this. And they link it to that. It's brilliant. Al Adamson was a hack, a super hack. But this is a fun movie to watch. And if look at this art. That's got to be Neil Adams. Neil Adams, had, had, Neil Adams must have done the work on this poster. So a very entertaining film. I like how they took the black and white and the... Tinted it, which is it looks cheesy, and it, the ex, the uh, explanation they gave was the atmosphere of the planet would change the color. But remember, this was something that was done in silent films all the time. Horror of the blood monsters. You know? And then when Star Wars came out, space mission to the lost planet. Yeah, they're trying to get they're trying to get whatever money they can out of it. So I just thought that was a nice little look there. And um, damn. This is, Bro, this dude never ages, man. That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, oh, I remember this. This was the one that did the uh, folk horror thing, and then this one, the, she ended up in a psych ward. But, but she said it, not me. I'm not making rumors. Uh, and very tr like she put her troubled life into this thing. I, whatever, man. Some of these movies look great. The one movie here that I would like to check out is this one here. This Polish film. Look at this this chick this chick's crazy. Look at her. Crazy crazy vampire woman. So, aren't they all right? I just kidding, just kidding. Come on. I'm just kidding. Uh, and get to the end. Uh, a lot of these I, I don't wanna bring up this thing, but the, there's all these things a lot now the people are older, a lot of these genre people are older, but there's a lot of people dying as they say, dying suddenly. 
Okay, I, I, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Alright. And the next issue is coming out in November, which means in uh, America is December, and it is Oliver Reed, and they're gonna cover one of my favorite underrated Hammer films, The Damned. Or oh, These Are The Damned, bro. I uh, can't wait to get that issue later.